Hello and welcome back. This is Jennifer McGuire. Today I am focusing on some creative ways to do masking on your cards. The nice part about this technique is it changes the look of your stamps, but it also can result in multiple cards at once. You know me, I'm always looking for ways to do that. My first few cards are slimline cards that show you how to get a different look out of one image. And then my last few cards show how to create negative and positive masked cards. All of my cards feature a new stamp set that Gina K Designs designed for Simon Says Stamp for the celebration of Stamp Timber. This is a set that's available now, but once it's sold out, they don't bring it back. So if you're interested in it, you may want to hurry. Why I like this large set is this image here. When you stamp it, you can stamp it on the bottom and then on the top, and then a sentiment in the middle, and it makes it look like an ornament. I'll be focusing on that for my first cards and the other images later on in this video. My first cards will be slimline, so I'm starting with white cardstock that's about four inches by nine inches. I can trim it down later, but that's a good size to start. On the right, that green piece will be my mask. I just thought it'd be easy enough to use cardstock for this that was left over. And I have a large circle die that I want to use to create the mask over the ornament. I want my ornament to be towards the bottom center of the card, so I'm taping it there. I'm also drawing a pen line right across the center. This will help me figure out the placement of my sentiment. The sentiment will go right across the center of the ornament. I'm also drawing lines above and below that, which will help me to space or to position the sentiment even more. So here's where my sentiment will go between that top and bottom line. Then I'll stamp this image below the sentiment and then also above it. So now we can go ahead and die cut that circle so we have a mask with a circle. I'll do a heart later too. Okay, so now it's time to start with our bottom image. We'll do that first, then the top image, and then the sentiment. So I'm using my Misty stamping tool so I can do multiple cards at once. I'm lining up the top of this image with the bottom pen lines. You can see the pen lines to the left and the right. And now I have that positioned. So let's start by making a key. This is one of the four by nine pieces, and I'm just stamping this with some sea glass ink just as a key. So you can kind of see what I'm doing. Most of what I'll be doing is white heat embossing, which is hard to see. So I wanted you to be able to see the image there with stamping. Now I'm putting in one of the other four by nine pieces using my anti-static powder tool, inking up my stamp with Versamark ink, which is a clear sticky ink. Then I'll add white embossing powder and set it aside. You could heat set it now, but it's easier to heat set them all at once. I will now repeat this process on a couple more so that I can make multiple cards. You can do one at a time if you want. These that I've done so far don't involve masking, so we'll get the ornament shape as the stamp set intended. I wanted to be able to share a comparison. Now let's do the masking. I have another clean piece of 4x9 white cardstock, and I'll put the mask over it. That way, when we stamp on it, we'll end up with a perfectly round shaped ornament, a little bit different. While you see me stamp this, you'll notice that I'm using a new tool. This is an idea that I got from a person named Chuck. Now, Chuck is in the Gina K Facebook group. If you're not a part of that group, you need to join. They are a great community, lots of great ideas. Chuck suggested using some sort of handle to rub over your Misty so that you get even uh, you know, pressure and get nice transfer of ink. Well, then somebody named Jane popped in and said, you know what would work great for this is a dry erase eraser for a dry erase board. So I went and I got one. It's got a felt bottom. And then you can easily rub across the top of your Misty instead of using your hand. And it works like a charm. So a big thank you to them. They said I could share this here. And I will be linking to the one I use below and sending them both a gift. Over in the Facebook group, they also talk about how you can make your own. Okay, so let's do that again. I have a piece of white cardstock. It's clean. I put my mask over it. I stamp on top of it, and that way I'll end up with an ornament that is round instead of that unique shape. It's nice, nice to have both options. So if you have a large stamp or a background stamp, try masking with it to create new shapes. Often smaller things like hearts and circles work great for it. After doing a few of those with white heat embossing, let's go back to our key. I want to now stamp above where our sentiment will go. So I'm lining up the bottom of that image with the top pen marks. You really could eyeball it, but I tend to be a perfectionist sometimes. It's the engineer in me. So I like to use those marks to help me out. 
So now this is the image we'll be stamping. You can see the beautiful shape of an ornament that that forms. So we'll end up with some this way and some that are round. And then later I'll do hearts too. So first I will white heat emboss this top image on the same pieces where I have the bottom image. These were done without the mask. Then I will go do the stamping on the versions with the mask. So I have this one where I have the half of a circle already heat embossed, putting my mask on top, and then I will ink the stamp and watch. You can see not all of it stamps because I have that circle mask. So I couldn't even make smaller circles. I could do a card where I have a big circle like this, a small and a medium. It'd be fun to do that too. You could just die cut a circle out of your stamp shape, but this way you can get a one layer card and it gives a really cool effect to have that smooth result. Now I also created a mask with a heart die. You could use any shape for this. So I just wanted to show you that briefly. This time I'm just starting with the top image first and I'll white heat emboss that. Then I'll go do the bottom image and then I'll do the sentiment in between. So it's nice to be able to get different shapes out of your stamps using a bit of creative masking. Since I'm making many at once, it was worth it to go through the steps to create the mask. After I had the top image heat embossed and the bottom image heat embossed, it's time to come back to our key, line up our sentiment in the middle, and then we can do the white heat embossing on all of our images in that same spot. That's the advantage of using a stamping tool because you can stamp in the same place each time. I will then white heat emboss on all of my examples, and I don't need to use the mask for that because it fits within the size of the ornament. Okay, so we have all of these white pieces of cardstock with white heat embossing. Now for some inky fun. I'll be working on my Waffle Flower Water Media Mat because it kind of helps to hold the paper as I ink. I'm using blending brushes. These are from Honeybee. I have some that I use only with oxide inks. These are the colors of Distress Oxide I will use on my first example. You could use regular Distress Ink, you could use any kind of dye ink that you want, but I find that Distress Oxide inks blend the best and the easiest because they have dye and pigment properties. It allows them to blend and go on like butter. So I'm starting on one end with the darker color and then I will work my way to a pink at the other end. Every once in a while I will stop and wipe off my embossing the heat embossing that we did so that the ink's not sitting on it. And you'll see that the white heat embossing resists that ink we put on top. It'll disappear as you see here, but as soon as you take a dry cloth to it, the white will show again because it's resisting the ink. The key to doing blending with any type of ink is to overlap the colors as you go from one to another. So you'll notice that I'll take the pink ink and overlap with the seedless preserves, the purple there in the middle. That helps to make them blend kind of seamlessly from color to color. Even two very different colors blend easily that way. I'll now take my inked background and put it in a box and I will spray it a few times with Sukaneko Shimmer Spritz. This will pro provide a shimmer to the background and also some little droplets. I'll press the button down fully on the bottle to get a mist and halfway to get little droplets. This is a great way to take a simple background like this where there's a lot of color and add something interesting to it. So this adds a shimmer. You don't need to do this if you don't want to, but I really like the results. On some of the other examples, I skipped that part. So this background is one that was created how the stamps were intended. Now let's do one where it ends up being the round ornament. So I first covered my entire background with cracked pistachio, and then I came in at the top and the bottom with some peacock feathers. Once I was happy with the results, I took the mask that we created before and I just taped it on to the front of our panel. That way I could ink up just the ornament part to help it to stand out more. I started out by applying broken china over the entire opening and then I'll buff off the extra ink and see what I think of it. I decided I wanted a darker blue around the outside edge of the ornament to make it look like it has some dimension. So here I'm applying some chip sapphire. I start on the mask and pull the color onto my project. That prevents any of those big blobs of color from your blending brush. And check this out, when you take off the mask, it's such a beautiful background. So now we have a round ornament, which I really like a lot. Instead of spraying the whole background, I'm spraying some onto my work surface, some of the shimmer spritz. 
and I'm taking a paintbrush and I'll flick some of the shimmer spritz onto the background. Distress Oxide ink reacts when it comes in contact with water and this has shimmer in it so it gives what looks like a snowfall look in the background. And I did put that circle mask on top of my ornament so that it stayed nice and clean. I wanted the message to be clear so that the wishing of joy really stood out. Now here is one of the backgrounds where I did the heart masking. So you can see the fun heart shape that we get. It looks completely different than how the stamp set originally intended. While I apply the tumbled glass to this, let me show you a trick that I figured out. I have my little creative corner for my Misty. That's that little ruler piece there. And that allows me to hold down my background without getting fingerprints on my project. And it really works well. In combination with the uh, work surface that I'm using, that watercolor media mat, it kind of holds there. And none of my paper will move and I won't get any of my fingerprints. So you can see how I'm just kind of holding it across there. I even hold the mask down with it. So you could always grab a ruler and see if this trick works for you too. Okay, so on this one I use tumbled glass, blueprint sketch, and here I'm putting some chip sapphire on the bottom. So with this example, I made the ornament lighter than the background. I also added some snowflakes falling from the background and I stamped them in the same inks that I used to do the inking. That's one of the nice things about oxide inks. They have that pigment property, which means it's a little bit opaque. So you can stamp a, a lighter color on a darker background and it'll show up a little bit. I also stamped some of the snowflakes with a white pigment ink. I noticed that some of my white heat embossing didn't go all the way up to the edge of the mask. That's because I used a piece of cardstock. I should have used masking paper. I'll do that on my next example. But you can always fill in some of that white heat embossing with a white gel pen and no one will ever know. Now this is a one layer piece. I love that look. You could always have just done your stamping and used a heart die cut and then glued that onto your card. But masking is such a fun technique. To finish the ornament off on each, I started by silver heat embossing the ornament topper. This is included in the stamp set. So I line that up, use my anti-static powder tool, stamp it with Versamark ink, and then add silver embossing powder. Next, I stamped with Versamark ink the bow, which is in the stamp set, added white embossing powder. But notice that the ornament string isn't long enough. So here's the trick that I did. I flipped it over, used the other end of the same image, lined it up with the string that's already done. It's very easy to line up the ends there. And then I'll repeat the process. I will use my anti-static powder tool, stamp with Versamark ink, add white embossing powder, and then our string is longer. Another idea would have just been to use a white gel pen to extend the line of the string, but this worked really well. Let's look at the completed card for this ornament. I drew, did trim the background down and then added it to a white note card. It's about four inches by eight and a half. The nice thing about Slimline is you can make it any size under four by nine and it'll fit in the envelope. I did add a few pearls to the ornament and check out that uh, shimmery background thanks to that shimmer spritz. And those little white droplets are just the big droplets of shimmer spritz that dried. It looks like snow falling in the background. So that was a pretty quick and easy card because there was no masking involved. But here's a completely different look. Here's the heart one. On this one, I silver heat embossed the string and skipped the ornament topper. Now the sentiments in the stamp set that I showed you were too long for the heart. So I chose a piece on earth from the Simon Says Stamp Slimline Scene Builder stamp set that just came out this month. So you can see all the snowflakes falling in the background. So this has a different look than our last example, but uses the same stamp set. Now for the round ornament. I wanted to do a string on it that had some dimension. Yes, I'm adding dimension to my one layer background, but I like dimension, so it's okay with me. I put a little a strong liquid adhesive, Gina K Connect, at the top of my ornament, and then I added the end of a silver cording. Once that's dry, I can put another drop of Connect on top of it, and then I'll add a bow there. You can put something heavy on it while it dries. It only takes a few minutes. Now I need to glue the string that go up to the top of the card. Using my T ruler, I'll just line it up with the center of that bow, and then I'll run some liquid adhesive right along the edge of it. Then I can lay my cording right onto it, and then let that dry and trim off the excess once dry. I could have tucked this in behind our stamped and inked piece, but I like this look where it goes right up to the edge and then I just cut it. The liquid adhesive will keep it from fraying. I'll just hold that on it while it dries. 
So here is the completed card. You can see the cording going up to the top of the card. You can see our little sparkly splatters in the background that looks like snowfall. That's thanks to the little droplets of that shimmer spritz that we added. And by the way, for these cards, I use a slimline envelope. And you can get slimline envelopes now in tons of colors, like the one you see here over at Simon's Stamp, and I'll link to that below. So now we've had the traditional ornament shape that the stamp set offers, a heart, and the round. I think the round might be my favorite. Now here is one of my other heart pieces. This one, I messed up the actual ornament part. I accidentally put a big splat of black ink at the center. So what I did is I cheated. I die cut a white heat embossed image over there from red cardstock into that heart shape. And I'm just gluing this on top of our card. So I hid the mistake, but I'm keeping the background. And I'm okay with that. That happens to me sometimes. I thought I'd just go ahead and share the result. So my messed up uh, masking piece is underneath this die cut red heart that you see on the card. I stacked a few there, so there's dimension. Now I'm putting some gold cording on top of that. This will get sandwiched behind our white heat embossed heart. The sentiment on that uh, heart that says Winter Wishes is also from that Scene Builder stamp set that I used for my other heart card. So I'll put that right on top. And now we have our cording. I can do the same thing before. Use my T-ruler to do a little line of glue, lay the cording into it, and let it dry there. I use my self-closing um, tweezers from iCrafter to hold the end of that cord so I know that it dries and holds there at the top of the card. I then created a double bow from the gold cording and added that to the top of the heart using a drop of the Connect liquid adhesive. I'll put an acrylic block on this to let that dry and make sure it holds there. So here is a look at the completed card. I thought it would look nice inside of a red slimline envelope. So this is not a one layer background because of my little um, boo-boo, but I fixed it by adding some layered heart die cuts to create a dimensional ornament. So if you don't like to mask, you could definitely just do this to get a different look from the stamp set. That stamp set is a much bigger ornament, but here we have a small heart-shaped ornament instead. And by the way, that background was done with worn lipstick and festive berries ink, and I stamped snowflakes in the same colors and fired brick. Now here's one other that I did the traditional way, how the stamps were intended, but instead of doing a slim line, I did a regular four and a quarter by five and a half inch note card. In case you don't like the slim line look, you could definitely do the cards that I just showed you on the smaller traditional card size. And by the way, I did add pearls to the ornament that keeps it from being a one layer card, but I couldn't help it. It just looks great with that sparkle. Okay, my next set of cards uses the positive and negative pieces of a mask to create these ornaments that you see that are really just individual snowflakes where we did some masking. Now this time I'm using Masking Magic from Gina K. This is a great masking paper because it holds up for multiple uses, which is what I'm doing today. I could have done that for the earlier cards, but this time I decided to use it because I'm using multiple openings on my mask. So here's a piece of masking magic that is four and a quarter by five and a half. I have some circle dies that I'm arranging. These will be my ornaments. If you want to simplify this, just do three ornaments coming down. I decided to do five, which is a bit much, and I have one overlapping there on the left, as you can see. So that's gonna take an extra step. You could definitely simplify this by only having three coming down. I think that would look nice too. The smaller die here on the left I'll have to do later because we can't die cut overlapping dies, so I'll create a different mask for that. But let's do these four. Ran that through my die cut machine and I'm keeping both the negative space which looks like Swiss cheese and the circle masks themselves. We'll use both to create two different looking cards. Now I have another smaller piece of masking magic and I will die cut from that this extra circle die that will end up overlapping with the uh, circle opening right behind it. So I'll run that through too. Again, you could save this step by not having overlapping ornaments, totally up to you. Now I have white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm putting it in the corner of my Misty. I then take the release paper off the back of my uh, masking magic Put that in the corner too and press it down and that way I can be sure they line up nicely. Both pieces are four and a quarter by five and a half. 
Now I'm taking some of those snowflake individual stamps from that Gina K stamp set I showed you at the beginning of the video, and I'll put a snowflake in the center of each of the openings. It's hard to see there, but the mask is there, and there'll be a snowflake at the center of each of the whole openings that we die cut. Now that we have these snowflakes positioned, we can heat emboss them on a bunch of backgrounds to make multiples at once. This technique is great for that. So now I'll use my anti-static powder tool, stamp the snowflakes with Versamark ink, and add my white embossing powder. I then will set that aside and repeat the same process on another piece of white cardstock. No need to move the mask. I know that these snowflakes are positioned just where they need to be to make multiple cards. So I'll stamp with Versamark ink on this one, white heat emboss once again. I'll do that on a few panels and then I'll heat set them all at once. While I have these stamps in place to create those ornaments, I'll do a few panels with silver embossing instead of white. So once again, I use my anti-static powder tool, stamp with Versamark ink, and then I'll put on silver embossing powder. I'll repeat this with a few more panels and heat set them. So I'll have some panels with white heat embossed snowflakes and some with silver heat embossed snowflakes. Let's start with the ones with white heat embossed snowflakes first. We're going to create these colorful looking ornaments with a white background using the negative space of our mask. So here I have one of our white heat embossed panels and I have the negative space mask lined up. So it's still there from the first one we created. Over the openings, I'm applying ink. I'm using Gina K ink here with the iCrafter small blending brushes so I can get into the small areas. Once I've applied a color, I can use a dry cloth to buff off the excess ink from the heat embossing. When we take off the Swiss cheese mask, what we'll have is four ornaments with beautiful color in each. So it'll have a snowflake at the center, a white snowflake, and color around it. For my other ornament examples, I did use Distress Oxide inks, but I wanted to show you that you could use regular dye inks like Gina K's dye inks for this. There's beautiful colors in the collection, so it's totally up to you. Okay, so after I have filled in all four ornaments, I can remove my mask and check that out. Those single snowflakes now look like ornaments, especially when we add the string on top. Now I can move that Swiss cheese mask onto another one of our panels with white heat embossed snowflakes. This masking magic paper holds up for multiple uses. It's much better than any of the paper masking paper I've used in the past. Since I'm using this so many times, it was important to use the masking magic. The ink also won't seep through it onto my card. So this time I used some Distress Oxide inks and a blending brush, and I added some of that purple tape there just to mask off the other holes so that I don't accidentally ink one color into another ornament. I wanted to keep all my ornaments one color. It would have been cool to do multicolor on each ornament, but I'll try that next time. So I continued this process with the white heat embossed panels, and here are the different color combinations I came up with. They look like dots right now, but when we add the string on top, they'll definitely look like ornaments. Now you could leave these as is, but I was really wanting to make that fifth ornament that kind of tucks behind that one on the left. So I put the mask that I die cut over here on top of that ornament. Then we have that second Swiss cheese mask that I created. It only has one hole in it though. And I'll position that wherever I want that fifth ornament to be. Now I'll take this over to my Misty, add a snowflake into that opening, and I'll remove that top mask. We don't need that for right now, but we do need that other mask there covering the other ornament. Use my anti-static powder tool, stamp the ornament with Versamark ink, then I can add my white embossing powder and heat set it. And I can repeat this with the other panels, just each time putting the mask over that ornament there on the left edge. Another option would have been to ink up all your ornaments first, then white heat emboss on top of it. But I find I get cleaner results if I do the embossing first because the embossing powder likes to stick on an inked background. Okay, now I'm covering up that ornament on the left and putting our mask, our Swiss cheese mask on top of it. And then I can ink with whatever color I want. This one happens to be shaded lilac. Then I remove both masks and check it out. We have that overlapped ornament look over there on the left and now we have five ornaments and I'm very happy. So again, you could have skipped it and just done three if you wanted to. Usually an odd number is best. So I repeated this process for all of my backgrounds with white heat embossing, and you can see the different color combinations that I ended up with. Before we finish those into cards, let's do our reverse 
cards. So this has a silver heat embossed snowflake with a white ornament and the color around it. So last time we put the color inside of the ornament, this time the color's outside of it, and this is the one that I like the best. I'll be using the panels that we silver heat embossed snowflakes earlier. Onto this, I will put our Swiss cheese mask. This is just so we can line up where the circle masks go. So this is just there temporarily. Again, I'm glad I used the masking magic because it's held up through all this. So I'm taking the circle mask and popping them in place. By putting the negative mask down first, I can make sure the snowflake is somewhat centered in the center of our circle. When I have all my circles in place, I can remove that negative space Swiss cheese piece, and I have my background with circles. Then we have that fifth circle, remember the fifth ornament, and I'll put that mask on too. Before I do the inking, I thought it'd be best to first white heat emboss my sentiment on the bottom. I could do my heat embossing after we do the inking, but as I mentioned, sometimes when you create an ink background, it wants to hold on to the powder that you add on top. So I think it's best to do the heat embossing first and then the inking, and the heat embossing will resist the ink we put on top. But it's totally up to you which way you want to do it. So I'll white heat emboss Merry Christmas on the bottom of each of these panels. Now for the fun part, we can add all the ink we want on the background. Now I'm going with a heavy hand using a blending brush. I really like using blending brushes for doing backgrounds like this, but you can use an ink blending tool if you prefer, whatever you're most comfortable with. I have blending brushes that I only use with oxide ink because I don't want to contaminate my dye inks with any of the ink that may be on my brush. Here I used uh, tumbled glass, broken china, and I also use blueprint sketch and chip sapphire. Notice I'm still using that ruler to hold it in place so I don't get fingerprints. That's really working well for me. And then I came and added a little bit of cracked pistachio at the top. Next, I put this into my box once again, and I sprayed it with that shimmer spritz and did some half spray so I would end up with some splatter too. I feel like that looks like sparkly snow in the background. And here's the best part. I used tweezers to remove our mask and look at that white ornament there with the snowflake in the center. I love all that color around it. I could have silver heat embossed on die cut white circles and glued them on an inked background, but there's something really neat looking about a one layer panel done with ink. Now I can move on to one of my other white panels with the silver heat embossed snowflakes. I use the negative space to help me line up the circle mask, pop the circle mask in place, remove the negative space, and there we can ink another background. Notice these masks have been inked a lot and moved around a lot and they're still working well. So I recommend getting Masking Magic when you're doing projects where you have a lot of inking. I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference. Here I'm adding different colors of Broken China, Blueprint Sketch, uh, Peacock Feathers. And this time I didn't blend from one color to the next, but did a background like with a mix of colors. This time, while the masks are still on, I decided to stamp on the background. Instead of using a background stamp, I'm using the snowflake border that's included in that Gina K. Simon Says Stamp stamp set that I showed you at the beginning. I'm stamping that with Blueprint Sketch Oxide Ink because it matches the inks I used in the background. Oxide inks stamp very well, so it's great to be able to stamp and create a background with the same colors because you'll know that they will go together nicely. I stamped once down the center and then decided to repeat it on the left and the right to cover the entire background. Now we can use our tweezers to remove the mask and this is where it just feels magical. I really love the effect of masking, especially with bold colors like that. Okay, let's finish off these cards. Next, we need to add the string so that our little dots look like ornaments. I like that this image is included in the set. This time I didn't use the topper of the ornament, I just did the string. I stamped it with black ink, and the nice thing is, because we made multiples with the same mask, I can stamp in the same spot on all of them and quickly stamp the string on each ornament on every one of the backgrounds. I just simply stamp it and switch to the next. After doing all of the ornaments, there was one that needed to be longer. You see that ornament that hung the lowest? I flipped it over and did that trick that I did last time where I rotated the string around, so I'm making the string longer but we need to place this mask here. So I'm just popping that one in place. And now here I have the string, I'll ink that up and my string is longer. I could have used a T-ruler and a black marker if I wanted to, but this seemed just as easy. 
On our panels with the white background, I stamped wishing you joy in the bottom with black ink. I also wanted to add snowfall or little dots to the background for a bit of interest, which you could totally skip if you wanted to. I used the Simonsa Stamp Lots of Dots stamp set. I love this set. I took some of the smaller dots and I stamped them repeatedly on the background of our white cards with a Simon Says Stamp Fog Ink, which is a light gray ink. You can stamp it once for super light and then stamp it again a second and third time if you want to to make it darker. It's totally up to you. By the way, those large dots in that stamp set, you could have stamped those large dots. I didn't think about this at the time. Instead of doing masking to create those large color circles and then white heat embossed your snowflake at the center. It would give the same look. One just involves masking, one involves stamping large dots. So that's another option for you again. I also added little sparkly dots to the background using my Stardust glitter pen. I did this on the white card backgrounds and the bold colored backgrounds. This just gives a little sparkle when you tilt it in the light and it looks like snow falling in the background. So for the white panel cards, I trimmed them down to four by five and a quarter and added them to a note card that I created from Simon Says Stamp Fog Cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half. I added a little iridescent gemstone to the center of each of the ornament snowflakes. You can see the subtle gray stamping and the little sparkly dots that I created just to add a bit of interest. If I would have skipped those gems in the center of the snowflakes, these would have been great one layer cards. Again, you could make these cards faster by skipping the masking and instead stamping the circles, or you could die cut them and have a layered card. Now here are the other ones that have the color around the ornaments and I just really like this result. So I put a silver gemstone at the center of each silver snowflake and you can see all the sparkle in the background. I really like the bold background color and that it's smooth. I could have white die cut circles, but that smooth inked look is just beautiful in real life. Now on this one, I have some small snowflakes in the background that I stamped with white pigment ink and also with oxide inks that match the colors that I use to blend the background. So like seedless preserves and chip sapphire. I also added a little silver gems to the center of the snowflake. So it has a bit of sparkle. And last but not least, my favorite of the backgrounds, the one where we stamped over the circle mass. So I hope today I shared with you some ideas for using masking creatively. It allows you to change the shape of stamped images you have, create one layer cards, and also make multiple cards using the positive and negatives of your mass. If you're interested in the supplies I talk about, they are linked below in my YouTube description as always. In the middle here, I have some other masking videos that may be helpful to you also. Thanks for spending this time with me. We'll see you again soon and have a wonderful day.